Civil Rights Attorney Joseph Lowe in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Sarah Flack. All right, let me start off by just saying, anytime I look at those videos, it is serious business and it is very, very scary. Um, so I want to start off with you, Sarah, and say, uh, you know, a lot of these folks, I think they went out there looking for literally a good time, and now they're going to find themselves being punished and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And in your mind, I say de deservedly so. What do you think? I agree with you. I couldn't agree more. I mean, whether or not you were there to have a good time, at the end of the day, conspiracy in this case would be conspiring to commit a crime such as the ones alleged here. Um, and so what we saw with these Facebook messages is, is working together with two or more people um, to commit this criminal conduct. And that's what they did. The intent is there. They flew there. They drove there um, with the intent to do what it is that they did. Um, and so all of that was planned. And so absolutely, I think that they will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law and rightfully so, legally so. Um, I think the prosecutors will have no issue in proving this criminal conduct, this conspiracy that occurred on January 6th. Now, Joseph Lowe, you know, some of the charges that we're seeing, they're not rising to the level of sedition, which is trying to overthrow the government. Do you think there can be a case made for that here? I do think that the case can be made. Here's why. Although these people don't necessarily stand for overthrowing the U.S. government, they clearly want to overthrow factions of the U.S. government. In other words, they feel disenfranchised, that they're no longer in power. This is uh, almost a conservative versus liberal uh, civil war, if you wanted to call it that. But let's be clear on one thing. As usual, the government, prosecutors, you know, the ones that Mrs. Flack used to work for, and they're clever when they write the law. And they write it in ways that pretty much allows them to charge a lot of people with a lot of things with a lot of room for interpretation. And sedition is no different. And it says in the sedition law that if they do anything using violence or uh, threats, which is definitely what happened here, and it delays the government and their duties, which it clearly did here when the government's trying to vote on the Electoral College. Under the sedition law, that is enough to be guilty of sedition, and that comes with a 20-year um, prison sentence. So it's, it can be really serious. Yeah, this is, this is serious stuff, Sarah. You know, uh, let me ask you, um, considering what Joseph just said, why aren't we seeing those more serious charges as of now? I think uh, under the writing, the writing of the law and the way it's written, I would think they would be available to prosecutors. You know, we can speculate on it. As a former prosecutor, I, my guess is that we will see those more serious charges as this gets fleshed out during over time. I think... From a prosecutor standpoint, you often see on the front end, you see a conspiracy charge that's sort of a catch-all. It's the easiest to charge. It was, I think, the quickest um, criminal conduct for them to allege and, and, and rise the level of probable cause at this point. But I think as the prosecution here starts to do their work, starts to subpoena um, records, Facebook records, phone records, text messages, video surveillance maybe from the hotels, and they start to build that case, I think that you'll see more serious charges, at least for some of these defendants down the road. But I think right now, conspiracy was the fastest way to get these arrest warrants signed off, sealed, and get them turned into a jail on, on these criminal charges that we saw. Yeah, I think these defendants are going to find out, like a lot of defendants we see here on Court TV, that the stuff you put on social media will come back to haunt you. All right, no, moving on. <laughs> right, Joseph? That, what are you saying? Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly you know, they, you saying. know, people need. Yeah. There needs to be an admonition on Facebook that says anything you can, anything you write, can and will be used against you in a court of law. Because man, we're seeing this constantly. It's become it. a favorite of prosecutors. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi recently named nine members to serve as impeachment managers during the Senate trial. A number of them have served as as trial attorneys and will no doubt draw on that experience when presenting evidence against the president. Now, Congressman Eric Swall. Well, one of the House impeachment managers talked about the unique circumstances of this trial, that some of the Senate jurors hearing the evidence were actually victims themselves, something you couldn't get away with in a regular courtroom, of course, during the Capitol breach. You know, when I was a prosecutor, I, I would never uh, preview to the public uh, what I would do in a courtroom. And our team has agreed that, you know, we're not going to do that either. But again, the, the facts here are no secret. And unlike most uh, cases, uh, the jurors here are actually victims. Uh, they uh, ran for their lives, too. They ran out of that chamber, uh, and they saw, uh, just as all of us did, uh, those terrorists storm their chamber, uh, ransack their desks, and just desecrate uh, a sacred symbol of democracy. 
House Speaker Nancy Pelosi hasn't sent the articles of impeachment to the Senate just as yet, but today Majority Leader McConnell seemed to open the door, politically speaking, for those in his caucus should they choose to vote for impeachment. The last time the Senate convened, we had just reclaimed the Capitol from violent criminals who tried to stop Congress from doing our duty. The mob was fed lies. They were provoked by the president and other powerful people. And they tried to use fear and violence to stop a specific proceeding of the first branch of the federal government, which they did not like. But we pressed on. We stood together and said an angry mob would not get veto power over the rule of law in our nation, not even for one night. All right, now getting an impeachment conviction, very, very difficult, especially with the divisions that we see now in the Senate. But in this case, because of what I said earlier, the fact that the actual jurors in this case, the senators, were the ones that were under attack and felt that fear, Joseph Lowe, I think that's got to help the case. It does. And in fact, as you well know, if they were real jurors, they wouldn't even allow to sit on the jury because they'd be too biased. But let's be clear on this. For the first time in history, you had your federal government overrun by its own people. It was overrun in a way to stop what the federal government had been doing for decades, in fact, for the entire time of its history, which is to have the people decide who was going to run the country. And it was just fine and it was all handled properly when Trump himself came into power, and he clearly was willing to show up for that. But when it didn't go his way on the second term, the petty little man that he is wasn't willing to at least be man or person enough. Let's be real. He wasn't person enough to say, you know what? The people have spoken. I don't like what they say. I don't agree with it. But I'm going to show up and have dignity, class, and respect for this country, the people in it, and what we stand for to ensure that the people get taken care of by me handing it over peaceably. His actions spoke volumes about how he doesn't care about us or anyone else in this country. He is so involved with his own narcissism or his own self-interest that he is free to say anything he wants, which is mostly lies, to get what he wants. And we now have to suffer the consequences for giving him the power to do that. Yeah, you know, and what you're saying uh, does make sense, as we're seeing that a lot of Republicans are jumping ship. Folks who were in his corner are now leaving him. I mean, Mitch McConnell, uh, the most important Republican, clearly is certainly leaving the ship. So that's got to hurt as yeah. well. Now, Sarah, a um, uh, quick question about this impeachment trial. I mean, ultimately, mm -hmm. it sounds like the defense might be First Amendment, that the things he said are protected by the First Amendment. But Comparing or, or sort of bringing into this, uh, this, this equation all the things we saw online, a lot of people testing, we're going down there, we're going we're gonna to rush the Capitol, we're going to do this and that. Him knowing that or at least having some sense of what his people were feeling and then saying those words seems to fall into the category of incitement. What do you say? I absolutely agree. I mean, the First Amendment is the First Amendment, but not everything is protected. Um, speech in this country. We see it every day in cases, you know, from the state level and obstruction charges where defendants may say certain things to officers. Um, not all speech is, is protected. There are fighting words. There's words that incite a riot, as we have here in this case. And so you don't just get to say what you want to say without uh, living the consequences of that. And in this case, if the, if the federal government can show and prove, and I think that they will, um, the intention behind what he said, that it wasn't just the words itself, but you'll start to see a story that's been told together. And I, I know they're already working on, um, you know, looking at his previous tweets and these sorts of things. Um, you start to see this course of behavior that shows and forms that intention behind the words that he said. Um, and ultimately, were said with the purpose of having these people storm the Capitol as they did and commit violent acts that they did do on January 6th. So um, absolutely, those are not protected words, and we will see him be prosecuted. Now, Joseph Lowe, quick question here. I, I got a couple seconds yeah. before the break. Um, this idea that, you know, these words incited uh, this movement, but yet he will no longer be president. Are you comfortable with the country focusing on impeaching a president who is no longer in office? Or should they focus on other things more important to the country? No way. Light him up. You, his words had consequences. Here they come. And I think we actually owe Sarah and all of her folks down there in Georgia 
An extra thank you for having the guts to vote right, do right, and to break from tradition. So thank you for your help and support in getting rid of this clown. All right. Well, we know where you stand, Joseph. All right. Guys, you stand by. We're going to take a quick break. Coming